now I want to talk about the F1 2020 uh, game. It's going to be released in July. First of all, uh, we've talked about earlier in the show what expectations we're, we're expecting in it, a new uh, manager mode, a new uh, everything, a team mode. Um, what are your expectations of this game? It's going to stay a great game. I really like how Co-Master embraces the whole career side and, and makes the game interesting to, to play also as a single player. And you can see this is quite successful on Twitch as well, right? You have a lot of, even mm -hmm. the pro gamers, uh, Cham is a perfect example, now Mars is, is streaming a lot as well, going through this career mode and it really shows that also they have to fight a little bit when playing the single player, um, which is really cool. Like this is, this is definitely helping quite a lot. Um, I obviously have high expectations that they also understand how much value is behind the esports side and therefore mm. also shape their game more towards the esports competition. Because obviously we have seen some bugs here and there, some some issues that we have run through in F1 esports. Um, mm. If they smoothen this out, this is going to be a, a pretty solid and decent esports game, to be honest. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, while I, while I think about it, a bone to pick with you. On that pro draft day, you gave me a card uh which said you were going to sign me uh you wrote that this is what danny did live show <laughs> to the to the world uh he wrote down tom we will take you and i had to uh pretend i hadn't read that <laughs> i almost froze uh are they really signing me uh so yeah thank you for that so yeah uh th that would be my personal bug fix in a presenting world uh, no oh, more right there you go. uh <laughs> so <laughs> So okay, so so a few things to work on. What do you make of the introduction of um, the if there's a Michael Schumacher special edition, you get to drive in the four most iconic cars in in his career. Uh, there's fun elements, but but in terms of the gaming aspect, uh, split screen could that possibly be helpful for your team when they're when they're driving and uh, bettering their 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 drives? Mm, to be honest, and frankly speaking, I don't think so. Um... These are all gimmicks that makes it easier for new players coming in, though. Or okay. also for our guys, obviously, with the, with the Michael Schumacher edition, that's amazing. Like, this is content that we all will enjoy and will love. And that's part of what I said in the beginning, right? You must have fun to play the game in order to really play it on the, on the highest level. And the more fun elements you have, the better it will be. When it actually comes to the performance side of things, though, um, our belief is that you have to practice on the actual setup that you also have in your tournament setup, which is more often mm. than not, obviously the Gfinity Arena. And that's also how we basically ran boot camps with the guys that we had the one-on-one -on -one setup, literally the same thing they also used in London. Um, and that's also what they will try to replicate their practice on inside of the game as well. They, they will try to run the long runs as well as they run it in the actual competition. Okay, uh, so, so I guess really when this 2020 game drops, You've got the side of the pro gamers that do they have to relearn much because there's there's a fun element there's the career mode there's you can become a new team on the grid and make your sponsorship changes talk about which engine you're going to put in etc but but for the actual pro gamers uh, how much time will they have to to put into it to, to learn about the the handling the AI uh, I mean, it really comes down to the game um, and how much it actually changes physic-wise. Um, mm. They would still have to invest quite a lot of time because every single game will have its quirks that you just want to find in order to understand the game better and also to to get the, the last tenth out of the game. So that's where they will surely invest a lot of time. Um, other than that, sim racing is pretty unique in a way how you practice because unlike in other games where you just have the natural skill of being good off the bat. Like if a Counter-Strike player, mm. if you put him in front of PC and put him on a different map, he will be good, period. Yeah. In sim racing, you always have to relearn your track. Like even if Freddy drove Silverstone, or like we had Aus Australia last week, right? Or two mm. weeks ago. If he would have to drive it today, he would slower than two weeks ago. He must relearn yes. the habits that he generated before the race. So mm. they always uh, have to invest so much time for each single race that there is. It's just a unique uh, thing in sim racing, and that's also why the workload in sim racing is actually quite high on the pro level. Yeah, um, that's that's a very good point, and I, I look forward to watching Freddie uh, on Sunday for the pro exhibition race. Uh, I'm sure we'll be highlighting that on, on Monday's episode. Um, how competitive is this F1 2020 game? And I know it's not out yet compared to the market of of R Factor Two or I Racing. Where would you, how would you compare the, uh, this F1? Let's say the 2019 game and 2020, where would you compare them alongside R Factor 2 and iRacing? And you now mean it from the pro point of view, right? Yeah, from, from, the, from the actual, yeah. from the, the, the sim racing element. 
I still believe that the competitive side and iRacing is stronger, but that's also mm. why we see most of the iRacers, some iRacers also having their foot in F1 esports, right? So Freddy, for example, mm. he has never done F1 before he joined us and then made F1 esports his career. Um, mm. That's also how I built the team basically in the end, because I truly believe that the best talent is simply in iRacing due to the nature of how the system works and how this, the, the whole service works with the competitive side of things. And that mm. translates also into other games. So I think iRacing would be number one from competition side. But then I definitely think F1 Esports is uh, also up there, like maybe second mm. place. Um, I'm unsure about Gran Turismo. I think Gran Turismo also has probably a high competition, but I would definitely focus on iRacing and F1. Okay, well, listen, uh, Danny, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to chat to you. I, I I did ask you in the quick fire round whether you think Freddie's going to win uh, uh, the uh, F1 Esports Pro Series 2020. So um, there's no reason why he can't, and I, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, you're going to be taking a bit more of a backseat. Nils is going to be looking after the whole team. Uh, is, yep. is that, a, a, obviously, with everything in G2, you've got a lot going on. Congratulations on that. But in terms of the Red Bull team, are you happy with where things are whenever the season starts? Yeah, I mean, looking back 13 years ago, Niels knows how it feels to be second. Um, so he will now have a better time, better time mentoring Freddy, who just finished second. Uh, no, I just jokes aside. Uh, Niels is, is doing a massive job. He also has a similar uh, profile than I had, right? So he can also mentor the guys in the same fashion. I also believe Niels has an even more focus on setup and and the physical side of the sport as well. Um, so combining us both is hopefully the formula to to push the guys even further and into another world championship title next year, yeah, or this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Well, listen, Danny, uh, thank you so much for being part of Nitro Nights. Uh, I can't wait to well. uh, get the season started. And and um, it's a shame that we haven't seen your dog, Rocky. But listen, uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, enjoy the rest of your time and hopefully we'll get you back on soon. Uh, and to everybody else, uh, thank you uh, for watching this episode. We'll be back on Monday. Don't forget all of the races taking part uh, and place on Sunday. I'll be doing uh, the F1 virtual Grand Prix in China. So come along and watch that. In the meantime, uh, stay safe and see you again soon. Thanks a lot, Danny. Thanks as well, Tom.